what made us want to come to Saginaw? Um, that's a great question. So we originally, so I, in about two weeks, uh, I'll be coming up on 21 years of full-time ministry. And did five or six years of just youth ministry. Then we went to Ohio and we started a church from scratch. It's what they call church planting. We did that in the college town of Kent, Ohio, and had fun doing that for about three years. Then we merged with another church, and I came up to a church in the thumb of Michigan, an established, traditional, 125-year-old church that was kind of down on its luck. And in a two-year period, we saw hundreds of people come to Christ. We were baptizing like whole families, hundreds of people getting baptized. And so it was exciting. It was thrilling, but it was disorienting for the folks who were, who had been there for years and years and years. Um, and so I had, in 2011, I had back surgery. And while I was away on back surgery, the seasoned citizens uh, hijacked the church and they said, don't come back. And we had just bought a house in the thumb of Michigan in a down economy, so we couldn't sell our house. And we, you know, we, we were heartbroken, and, and if you've ever been re felt rejected by a church, imagine being the senior pastor <laughs> and a small group tosses you out. So that was, that was pretty awful. And like Amber said, we were in the season where we didn't have a church to go to, really. And so we started driving down to uh, the suburbs of Detroit to find something for, for our kids and that we connected with. And I mean, originally, John, when we decided we were going to start a church, that that's how God was leading, that we should bloom where we were planted, not, you know, try and be a graft somewhere else. Um, originally, he was looking just to stay, like, in the thumb and, like, small, small town. And I was like, no, this vision is too big for this town. Like, we need to go where we can have the greatest impact, and that is... Saginaw. Like that's where there's more people that we can reach and that's where we need to go. So um, then that idea was backed up by some mentors that were walking alongside of us uh, in the process of planting. And, um, and so then we, that's, that's kind of... We went about. through a very slow two-year process. Uh, where where I, I said, I need to see a counselor. You know, I've just gone through this traumatic experience. So um, we took our time. And everybody, frankly, where we were at, we were living in Cairo. Everybody in Cairo wanted us to start the church right there and to split the church that we came out of. We didn't actually have relationships in Saginaw. Um, so I think that was part of you know, your hesitancy. So it was a mm -hmm. really big leap of faith to just put out uh, our net, basically, and see, you know, what we could catch and, um, and not have people. So everybody was coming from outside of Saginaw with the vision of reaching Saginaw to get it started. Mm -hmm. And that's how. And part of the idea also of being in Saginaw is we wanted to be as far away from Caro as possible. Right. For integ well, no, for, we were living there, but we didn't want to create division in the church. I mean, I've been thrown out of the church, but it's still God's church. And no man has permission to divide God's church. So for integrity, we went as far away as we could, which was Saginaw. And even though all we heard were negative stories about Saginaw, we were scared. You know, we've just been living in Carroll for two years, a small town. They're like, don't go to the big city. There's gangs and bad people and whatever. <laughs> Um, for integrity's sake, we would not split the church. Um, God does not bless mess. And so we went as far as we could into Saginaw. And it's been awesome because now we've gotten to meet all of you and gotten to meet people that we never would have met, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, and we eventually sold our house. We moved out here about five years ago, and we just live around the block. Um, so we're, we're deep into the community. Our kids go to school here, and this is the church that we want our family to, to grow up in, you know. That's a great question. Yeah. So you're stuck with us. We got painted into a corner. That's honestly what happened. <laughs>
you know? And now 10 years later, I've been invited back to that church to officiate, like, funerals, um, which has been pretty cool because now the people that threw me out, 10 years wiser later, they're able to see, oh, okay, here's where maybe we messed up, and, and here's how we see how God's working in your life. And, and God uses all things for the good of those who trust him. So there has to be a death before there can be a resurrection sometimes. And so there wouldn't have been a life church if there hadn't been deep rejection. Mm-hmm. So there's a purpose for your pain. There's always a purpose. That's a great question. <laughs>